Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I'm here to do the final haul and unhaul of 2022. So earlier in Bookmas, I did a major November book haul. And since then, a handful of other things have kind of accumulated. Also, I realized after I had filmed that video that I was missing several books from a book outlet order and they had to reship them to me because apparently they were missing from a package. It was like damaged in transit. In fact, some of the books that I did receive in that package were damaged and they had to replace them for me. And I didn't realize until later that there were actually books missing from that package. So I have the remainder of that book outlet order as well as a handful of the other things that I've ordered. And I do also have a few other books to unhaul. Definitely not enough to warrant its own video, which is why I'm combining the two. These first few are actually books that I decided to purchase because I listened to them on audio recently and decided that I wanted to have them on my shelves. The very first one is The Sound of Rain by Greg Olson. This is the very first in his Nicole Foster. I believe it's only going to be a duology, but Nicole Foster is essentially a disgraced detective. The very start of this book, she has lost her home, her car, her pet. She's got a gambling addiction, so she's very, very much struggling. And on top of that, prior to the start of this book she actually lost her job due to something that happened with a case and so she's very much down on her luck and this story kind of follows a little bit of a redemption arc for her as she's trying to really solve what happened in that case that ruined her career. I enjoyed this enough it wasn't amazing but there is one book left that I do want to go ahead and finish because I feel like this ended really abruptly I feel like there was a lot more that should have been included and so I kind of want to see the resolution of that in book two. Next I have A Bridge Across the Ocean by Susan Meisner. This was a fantastic historical fiction. Susan Meisner is quickly becoming a go-to historical fiction author for me. This one did not disappoint. It actually follows three perspectives. One is in the present day and you're following Brett who has the ability to communicate with spirits. She has largely ignored this gift for the majority of her life but when an old high school classmate who knows what she can do contacts her because he needs her help for his daughter who believes that she saw her dead mother on the Queen Mary, Brett decides to go and help. And when she does go to the Queen Mary to see if she can find this girl's mother's ghost, she ends up being led into a different direction by an unknown spirit regarding a passenger that was on the ship, I believe it was in 1946. And Brett is very intrigued by this mystery and she takes it upon herself to find out what really happened. Then in the past, you're following two separate perspectives during World War II. You're following Simone, who is at the time of this book, hiding out in a wine cellar because she is wanted by the Gestapo after she killed one of them. And then you're following the story of Anna Luisa, who is a ballerina in Germany and what happens when she's kind of forced to marry this Nazi soldier and the horrific things that he does to her and what she ends up doing to escape. Simone's and Anna Luisa's perspective ends up converging on the Queen Mary in 1946 as they are both heading to America. You're following the present day timeline. You're following Simone and Anna Luisa separately in the early 1940s leading up to their journey on the Queen Mary and then what happens when they are actually on the Queen Mary. I very much enjoyed every single perspective. I loved watching them all come together. I loved unraveling the mystery. It was just so well done. And this is another kind of situation where it covers things that you don't normally hear about. Like I don't think I've ever read or heard of another book set on the Queen Mary, which at the time was a luxury cruise liner. It ran from the 1930s through the 1960s. It was also a troop transport. And then as the case of Anna Luisa and Simone, it was actually bringing war brides from like the UK to America. And then now it is permanently docked in Long Beach, California, where it is a museum and a hotel. So that was a different aspect of this book that you don't normally see told. And I really enjoyed this one a lot. Then I have Indelible by Karen Slaughter. This is the fourth book in her Grant County series. I enjoyed this one immensely. This series keeps getting better and better. It was like a rocky start with the first two, but now they just keep getting stronger and stronger. This follows Sarah Litton, who is the medical examiner as well as the pediatrician in small Grant County, Georgia. It also follows Jeffrey Tolliver, who is the chief of police and Sarah Litton's ex husband. So you're following them as they are working together to solve crimes. In the very beginning of the story, somebody comes into the police precinct, shooting it up and holding people hostage, including Sarah and Jeffrey. So you're following that present day perspective. And then you're actually hopping into the past when Jeffrey and Sarah first met. Very much enjoyed it. Thought it was probably one of the strongest that I read in the series so far. And I gave this a four stars. I also picked up The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I read this as part of the vlog where I read the lowest rated books on my TBR. And I enjoyed this more than I was expecting to. This is set in a very small, snowy North Carolina mountain town that is notorious for all of the disappearances that happen there and you're kind of following this one main character who works at a lodge that is directly against the trail where a lot of these people have gone missing and so you're following her as she's kind of trying to uncover what happened to them so I actually thought this was very well done it did have a little bit of those isolation vibes because it is such a small town that is kind of cut off from the rest of the world especially if like a snowstorm happens and I gave this a 3.5 stars 
Next were my book of the month selections for the month of December, Quiet Life by Ethan Joella. I have never read anything by Ethan Joella. I believe this might be his second book, but this sounded beautiful and heartwarming because it deals a lot about grief. I can't say I enjoy necessarily reading books about grief, but I think it's like the one main thing that everybody has in common. It's the one thing that really connects us all that we could all really relate to. And so I enjoy character driven stories that dive deeply into that because they are very just so beautiful and touching. And that's what I expect this one to be. And of course, I picked up All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I read her debut, A Flicker in the Dark. I think it was earlier this year and really enjoyed it. So I wanted to grab this. I believe this follows a child who was kind of taken out of his crib. He was never found and his mother has kind of been spiraling ever since then. She's had a hard time sleeping. In order to try to generate new leads to find out what happened to her child, she agrees to go on a true crime podcast. But the true crime podcaster seems almost as interested in her in her past as he is in finding the missing child. And so he's trying to be intrusive and dive into her past, which she does not appreciate. And so all of this chaos combined with her insomnia is causing her to question a lot of things, including what she thinks happened the night that her child disappeared. So this sounds really fantastic. I am excited to get into this. I also picked up Gillian Flynn's Dark Places. This is a make or break for me with Gillian Flynn. I read Gone Girl many, many years ago, probably right around when it was first released. And I don't remember being as impressed with it as everybody else was. I wasn't as shocked by the twist as everyone else was, but I know that it kind of changed the way a lot of people look at thrillers and how they read, but I enjoyed it enough to continue and so I read Sharp Objects by her and didn't love it. And so since I have the book of the month editions of those, I wanted to go ahead and grab the book of the month editions of this as well. And so I want to give it a try and see if I really enjoy it. And if so, I will continue with her if she ever does decide to release something new in the future. But I'm not as impressed with her as everybody else seems to be. So we're going to see what this one does. It sounded really interesting. So I have high hopes. Then I have Make You Mine This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones. This was the book that was sent in the Illumicrate Afterlight subscription service. So it's got like beautiful special edition red spray edges. This of course is a Christmas story. It is actually a sapphic tale. This is about a woman who is fake dating this guy but she ends up falling for his sister. So this is the romance between our main character and this sister. I also have The Rewind by Alison Winscotch. This was the very first book I received as part of the Authentic Books Box subscription service. And I actually chose this, like I get to choose the books that I receive in that subscription service. So I really like the sound of this. This sounds like it's the ultimate like New Year's Eve type of story. It follows college sweethearts Frankie and Ezra who had kind of a contentious breakup right before graduation. And they really just didn't want anything to do with each other after that. But they are returning to their New England town because their mutual friends are getting married. They just kind of want to avoid each other and stay out of each other's way but the very next day which is either new year's eve or new year's day they wake up in bed together they have rings on their fingers and they have no idea what happened this sounds fantastic i would really like to get to this before the end of the year i don't know if i'm going to be able to just because i'm having trouble sourcing an audiobook at this time there's a long wait at my library but if i have the availability to read this later this month or even in early january i probably will all right so now getting into those last few book outlet books i have the therapist by ba paris i have read three books by ba paris now and i've actually really enjoyed all three of them and I'm excited to see what this one is. I don't really know much about it. It says Alice and Leo have just moved in together to a gorgeous gated community in London but when Alice tries to get to know their new neighbors she discovers a devastatingly grisly secret about her new home and begins to feel a strong connection with Nina the therapist who lived there before. Alice becomes obsessed with trying to piece together what happened but none of her new neighbors want to talk about it. Soon it becomes clear to Alice that things are not at all as they seem. Okay, I'm intrigued. I am absolutely here for it. Next, I have Girls Like Us by Christina Alger. So I have actually never heard of this author before. She was never on my radar. And then I saw this on Book Outlet and it sounded really, really interesting. So I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. I believe this is a piece of detective fiction and it features the reluctant return to the hometown trope, which I love. It says FBI agent Nell Flynn hasn't been home in 10 years. Nell and her father, homicide detective Martin Flynn, have never had much of a relationship. And Suffolk County will always be awash in memories of her mother, Marisol, who was brutally murdered when Nell was just seven. And Martin dies in a motorcycle accident, Nell returns to the house where she grew up so that she can spread her father's ashes and close his estate. At the behest of her father's partner, Detective Lee Davis, Nell becomes involved in an investigation into the murders of two young women in Suffolk County. The further Nell digs, the more likely it seems to her that her father should be the prime suspect and that his friends on the police force are covering his tracks. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if I actually read through this entire synopsis because I don't remember that at all, but this sounds amazing. I'm excited to get into this. Next, I have The Passengers by John Mars. If you watched that recent video that I posted about all of the authors that I definitely want to try in 2023, John Mars is one, and that is because I've heard a lot of really great things. And so when I saw this on Book Outlet, I jumped at it and it sounds really interesting. It sounds like it's going to be a reality TV type of thing with self-driving cars. So it says... 
Just as self-driving cars are becoming the trusted, safer norm, eight people find themselves in this terrifying situation, including a faded TV star, a pregnant young woman, an abused wife fleeing her husband, an immigrant, a husband and wife, and a suicidal man. From cameras hidden in their cars, their panic is broadcast to millions of people around the world. But the public will show their true colors when they are asked which of these people should be saved and who should be killed first. So that sounds really interesting. I am super intrigued. Next, I have The Chain by Adrienne McKinsey. This is a book that has actually been on my radar for a while, but I was kind of hesitant to pull the plug just because I wasn't sure if Adrian McGinty was an author for me, especially like his recent release, The Island, didn't really sound like super appealing and I've heard some negative things, but the concept of this book is absolutely fascinating to me and I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot. From what I understand, there is a criminal in here who has started the chain and what that means is a child is kidnapped and then in order for the parent to get that child back, they have to pay the ransom and then go kidnap another child. Then they have to let them know that their child has been kidnapped and it continues to go over and over and over again and it sounds absolutely ingenious to me. I really want to know who is behind this and what the overall purpose of it is, like what the end game is in this story. So I pulled the plug on it. If you have read The Chain or if you have recently read the other one called, I think it was called The Island, please let me know what you think about them. I'm a little bit nervous to go in and love this and possibly not love The Island if I decide to read it a little bit later. But if I love Adrian's writing, I might just go ahead and do that because the concept of this is just as amazing to me. I've never heard of anything like this before. And so I had to pick it up. All right. So those are the last books that I do have to haul for you today. I do plan on picking up Book Lovers by Emily Henry and Bountiful by Serena Bowen because I did read those in December and want to have them on my shelves. I just haven't placed the order for them yet, but they will be coming in December. And so I'm just going to include those here for you as well. Consider them hauled. Now let's go ahead and get into the unhaul portion of this. There are only a handful of books here, not very many at all. So I'm just going to quickly run through them. First, I have Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy. I read this in November and didn't really care for it at all. I gave it a three stars. It was pretty lackluster in my opinion. It wasn't what I was expecting. I have forgotten almost every single detail about this story and it doesn't need to remain on my shelves. So it's going up on Pango. I have The Whisper Man and The Shadows, both by Alex North. I read The Whisper Man a year or so ago at this point, And I remember based on like my Goodreads rating and review that it was an overall okay reading experience, but I actually don't remember absolutely anything about that book whatsoever. Not the plot line, not the characters, not the twist, not what happened, nothing. So it couldn't have made very much of an impression. And then when I went to go ahead and start this, this really wasn't doing it for me. I actually DNF'd it, although I don't really consider it a DNF because I stopped reading it so early on in the book. It was just kind of like a trial and I decided it wasn't for me. And because I don't think I'm ever going to want to get to this again, and I don't really have necessarily stellar memories of the Whisper Man, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of both of these. So these next two I've kind of been hemming and hawing about. I'm going to go ahead and include them here, but they might not find themselves on Pango. I'm not sure. I have Vicious and Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This is an adult fantasy series that follows our main characters, Victor and Eli. And when they were in college, they discovered a way to make themselves extraordinaries where basically they have near death experiences and they come back from the dead and they have superpowers. And then the very different directions that these two men go and how the actions of one end up to, I believe the imprisonment of the other. And once he's released the vengeance that he seeks. I read Vicious and you know, I think it was an okay reading experience. This is another situation where I don't remember much about it at all. And I'm not really willing to go revisit it. Like I'm not really willing to go read a summary of it. It just doesn't matter as much to me. I did get vengeful because I had every single intention of continuing in the series, but the longer that it sat on my shelves, the more that I just don't think I want to. V.E. Schwab is a very hit or miss author for me. I have stopped a lot of her series and I'll actually be discussing that a little bit more in a video that I'm planning on doing about series that I've DNF. She has to write very specific types of stories. I feel like for me to like her writing, I'm just not interested in everything that she writes. And I don't know if I'm interested enough to continue with this series. Next, I have two Morgan Matson books. I have Amy and Rogers Epic Detour and The Unexpected Everything. I was planning on reading Amy and Rogers Epic detour in November and decided to go ahead and not even bother. Just decided to go ahead and unhaul it. I have enjoyed some of Morgan Matson's books in the past, which is why I still had these two on my TBR, despite the fact that I've gotten rid of almost every single other YA book that I had on my TBR, because I just wanted to go ahead and continue with Morgan Matson because she's been like a reliable and solid author for me, but these just aren't what my heart and soul want. I'm just not in the mood for them. I don't know if I will ever be in the mood for them. I think I'm just moving so far away from YA that just the thought of reading these is making me feel slumped. It's making me feel like I don't want to do it. That's what my instinct is telling me. And so that is why I've made the decision to go ahead and unhaul these. I'm going to keep the Morgan Matson books on my shelves that I've actually read, but I don't think I want to keep these on my shelves. I think I'm just going to go ahead and let them go because there are so many other books out there that I'm really super excited to read. And the longer that they sit on my TBR, they just stress me out and cause me anxiety. It's almost like, well, you just need to read them and get them over with. And if I have an opinion on these books, I don't really feel like they need to stay on my shelves. Next, I have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. The only reason why I'm getting rid of this is just because I have a duplicate. I think I'm 
must have accidentally ordered two copies from Book Outlet and so I'm gonna go ahead and sell the other one. I definitely do still have this on my TBR. Abby Jimenez is one of the authors that I need to read in 2023. This is simply going because I don't need two copies. And then the very last book that I'm going to be unhauling for the year of 2020 is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. I have actually heard a lot of really great things about this story which is one of the reasons why I picked it up. I actually really enjoy historical fiction. It primarily has to be like World War II historical fiction that seems to be my love language in terms of historical fiction but I also have to be in the mood to read it. It takes a very specific mood for me to want to read historical fiction no matter how much I love it or how much I think I'm going to love the book. If I'm not in the mood for it I don't want to pick it up. I say all that just because as good as this sounds and as many rave reviews as I've heard for this book this doesn't necessarily intrigue me. I know from what I have heard that it is a very slow burn very character driven narrative which overall is my jam but just like the subject matter doesn't really interest me. So I think this is about a guy who is imprisoned. 30 year old Count is deemed an unrepentant aristocrat by a Bolshevik tribunal. He is sentenced to house arrest in the Metropole, a grand hotel across the street from the Kremlin. An indomitable man of erudition and wit, Rostov must now live in an attic room while some of the most tumultuous decades in Russian history are unfolding outside the hotel's doors. Unexpectedly, the Count's reduced circumstances provide him entry to a much larger world of emotional discovery as he forges friendships with the hotel's other denizens, including a willful actress, a shrewd Kremlinite, a gregarious American, and a temperamental chef. But when fate suddenly puts the life of a young girl in his hands, he must draw on all his ingenuity to protect the future she so deserves. So this actually sounds beautiful and like I said very character driven and it sounds like he's going to be developing a lot of really amazing relationships with the people that he is stuck in the hotel with and that is certainly right up my alley but for some reason I'm not in the mood for this and thinking about reading this doesn't give me joy and it doesn't give me anticipation. It gives me anxiety and I think I just need to go with my gut on this one as well and unhaul it. Now if I change my mind in the future and decide to read it I will go ahead and listen to it on audiobook before I bring it back into my home but for now it is going to go. All right y'all that is it. Those are the final books that I plan to haul and unhaul in 2022. Please let me know if any of the books that I've hauled in this video are ones that I should make a priority. As always y'all if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.